This video will help you to sketch linear functions. So the purpose of a linear function is to show the relationship between two variables, an independent and a dependent variable, that result in a straight line. So we're going to display the relationship between two variables in the forms of a graph. So we're going to do it graphically. And when we display that, it's going to form a straight line. Okay, the independent variable is a variable that cannot be influenced by other factors, and they're always plotted on the x-axis. So we're lo looking at how the value of our dependent variable changes based on a change in an independent variable. So for example, you might remember when you did a experiment in science where you had to boil water and you had to plot the temperature against time. So in that, because you were putting heat into the water, that was changing the temperature, but and the temperature was rising. But the time itself, which and you probably had a stopwatch and you were recording how long it was taking, that wasn't influenced by anything else. Dependent variables are variables that change as the independent variable changes, and they're always plotted on the y-axis. Now, a dependent variable, in the case of the experiment you did in science, is the temperature of the water. The reason why it's a dependent variable is because you had the Bunsen burner underneath the beaker of water. Now, the only thing that changed was the temperature of the water because of how long you had that heat underneath the water. If you had have taken that heat away, then obviously it would have cooled down. But because you've got that heat there constantly, as time increases, our independent variable, so does the temperature. Now the gradient is used to tell us how a dependent value changes when the independent value changes. So for example, when you were doing your science experiment, for every minute, that you had the Bunsen burner on underneath the water, how, by how many degrees did the temperature of that water rise? And so that's what we're looking at the gradient. So, so as the time change changed, so we got from one minute to two minutes, how much is the temperature going up? And if that was the same amount for every single minute, then that would give us a nice straight line with a gradient. Okay, so the intercepts, which are another important part of the linear function, and the intercepts are where the line actually crosses either the x-axis or the y-axis. And they're important because they tell us um, when the value of the opposite variable is zero. So for instance, if we have a look at where the line crosses the x-axis, which is here, okay, that tells us when the y value is zero. So at x is looks like 0.6, then the y value would be zero. If we have if we have a look at where the line crosses the y axis, which is at this point here, then we can see at that point at negative two the when y is negative two then the x value would be zero. So the x intercept tells us when the value of y is zero and the y intercept tells us when the value of x is zero. So that okay, so there's four real steps to sketching a linear function, um, and it's really important that you follow these. And the first step is that you need to ensure that y is the subject of the equation. And what do we mean by y is the subject of the equation? Well, we're looking for how y, the value of y, changes with x. So y equals 3x plus 1. In this case, y is 
the subject of the equation because here we've got y all by itself. If we had an equation which was y minus x equals 1, then y here is not actually the subject of the equation. We don't have a pronumeral that's the, that is the subject of the equation. But that can easily be fixed. All we need to do is solve the equation for y. So we do that by adding x to both sides of the equation. We get y equals x plus 1. So that's the first step. You need to do that. The second step is to construct a table of values with the independent variable as the first row and the dependent variable as the second row. And this is really important. You must ensure that the independent variable is the first row and the dependent variable is the second row. And that is so important that I'm going to underline it. So the independent variable as the first row, remember that the independent variable is our x value and the dependent variable is the second row and that's our y value and this is always the case so the third is to draw a number plane with the independent variable on the horizontal axis so that's the x-axis and the dependent variable as the vertical axis you then need to plot the points and join the points together to make a straight line Okay, so here we've got our equation of the line, which is given to us here. And remember that I said the first step was to check that it was given to us in a form where y was the subject of the equation. And that is the case. We don't have to do anything there. The next thing that we need to do is make a table of values. And we could do that for any values of x, but we're going to choose, obviously, values of x that are within our number plane here and so we're going to choose just values of negative 1, 0, positive 1 and so when we substitute those values into the equation so we're going to substitute our values of x into our linear equation so we get y equals negative 4 lots of negative 1 plus 2 and that will give us negative 4 times negative 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6 so our first point is negative 1 6 so if we go to our x value which is negative 1 and our y value which is 6 plot that there then the next value that we've got is 0 x is equal to 0 so y is equal to well, negative 4 times 0 is 0, so 2. So we come down to 2. And 1, substitute 1 in, is negative 4 times 1 is negative 4, plus 2 is negative 2. Okay, you need to connect a line through those points using a ruler. Make sure you do that. Then the next step, which is also very important, is that you then label it. So you now need to label that um, with its function. So we write y equals negative 4x plus 2. And we also need to make sure that our axes are labelled. So we've got our x and our y. And your graph isn't actually complete until you have done those. You also should have arrows on the ends of your, ends of your line and if we see these in your book and they're not done exactly like this then we'll be asking you to fix those up so please do them correctly the first time. Okay so we've sketched the following function we made first we made a table of values then we plotted them on our graph. Now we need to identify the x and y intercepts. So if we have a look at our graph, first we'll do, deal with our x intercept. So our, the function is crossing the x axis at about 0 0.5. So our x intercept
is equal to 0 0.5 and our y intercept is equal to 2 and we also c can need to work out the gradient of the line now as I said before there's a couple of ways you could do that first way is to do our rise over run and so we do that by just taking two points so we will take the this point here our run is 1 and our rise is 4 now because it's sloping downwards it's negative so we know that it, the gradient m is equal to negative 4 over 1 which is equal to 4 now if you have a look up here remember that I also told you by having a look at the difference between the x values, so as x increases, what happens to the y values? So when we start off with negative 1 as our x value and y as our the 6 is our y value, then we go to our next value as x is only decreased by 1, but our y value has decreased by 4. So we know that it's negative 4. Another example of sketching a linear function, remember that the first step is that we need to make sure that y is the subject of the equation. Now we can see that y is not the subject of the equation because we've got x plus y. So we just need to subtract x from both sides and we end up with y equals negative x plus 5. So our function y equals negative x plus 5 and then we substitute 1, negative 1, 0, 1 and so when we substitute negative 1 into our function we get negative negative 1 which is positive 1 plus 5 which is 6 and then we have y 0 so 0 plus 5 which is 5 and then negative 1 plus 5 which is 4 so we can then plot our points so the first one is negative 1 6 the second point is 0 5 third point is 1 4 the next step is that we need to label our axes, so x, y, we need to put a line through our points, we need to put arrows on the end of our line and we need to write the equation of the line which is y equals negative x plus 5. So the next step is that we need to identify the x and y intercepts. Now you notice here that in this case we can't actually, we can identify the y intercept because we can see where it crosses the y axis so we know that the y intercept is equal to 5. To find our x intercepts we can see that you can't actually see it using the line that we've got but what we can do is continue our line with the same gradient until we hit the x-axis. So adding another line and we continue it with the same gradient so every single time we and there we have it. So that we've continued our line along so now that we've continued our line along we should make sure that we have got arrows at each end just to show that it continues on. We don't want our linear function to stop because there's not actually anything from stopping it continuing. And now we can read that the x-intercept is also 5. Now to work out the gradient of the line, um, so we can do one of the two things. You could either do the rise over the run or we can just have a look at our tables of values. And as we see as x increases, what's happening to the value of y? 
well it's decreasing by 1 every time. Because it's decreasing, that tells us that it's negative, and it's decreasing by 1, so the gradient of the line is negative 1. Okay, so this is a you-do question. Um, so remember that you're going to have a go at doing it first, so pause the video now, have a go at it, and then I'll talk you through it. Hopefully the first thing that you did was have a look at the equation and see if it's solved for y. In this case it's not, so we need to do so. y minus 3x equals 2. So now the next step is to add 3x to both sides. Remember that 3x plus 3x is 0, so we get y equals 3 x plus 2 and so our function is y equals 3 x plus 2. So choose put, substitute the values of x in so we've got minus 1, 0 and 1 so 3 for the first one for x is minus 1 substituting that in we get 3 lots of minus 1 which is neg th negative 3 Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. Now we've got 0 times 3, which is 0, plus 2 is 2. And then we substitute in 1, and we get 3 lots of 1, which is 3, plus 2, which is 5. So the next step is to plot our points on our Cartesian plane. So we've got negative 1, 1. 2, negative 0, 2, so 0, 2, and we've got our 1, 5, and notice here now in this case the line is actually going to cut the x-axis, so we shouldn't have any troubles there. Okay, so you've got your line. Don't forget to put the arrows on the end. Label your axes and write the equation of the line. Now, the next step is that we need to identify the x and y intercepts. The x intercept is here, and it is x equals negative 0.5 and y is equal to, well it's a point on the line, which is 2. And if we want to work out the gradient of the line, let's have a look back at our table of values. Table of values. As x is increasing, what's happening to the value of y? Well it is increasing by 3 every single time, so our gradient is m equals 3.